How we doing today, guys? Sam and Ryan back with you with this week's fishing report. Fishing's been pretty good, um, and there's a lot of exciting stuff happening, especially Definitely. on your end over there. Yep. But starting out with what most folks are going to be doing, at least up in our area, is the rockfish. So rock fishing is a little bit tough on the main part of the bay, and the reason for that is we have a little bit of low oxygen. So the best fishing for rockfish has either been at the bridge, where you're always going to find fish all summer, all fall long. But really where people are having a really good amount of success is fishing in the river system. So similar stuff to what we would do in fall, but really we're just doing a little bit earlier. Um, I think the first thing to start out with is going to be classic paddle tails in the shallows. Uh, casting in the three to five feet of water against shorelines, whether you be in the Magathy or the Severn. I know they've been doing really well up in the Magathy over the past two weeks, casting towards shorelines with paddle tails and stuff like that. Um, a really good bait to change it up with would be this here from Rapala. Any sort of small jerk bait, a world minnow would be another good option here for you. But, uh, but jerk baits are a great one. One thing to keep in mind as far as colors go is, is we're really fishing the classic colors. But we do have some really dirty water. So stuff that shows up really well on that, yep. um, it's going to be this blue or this chartreuse. Um, and, I got a chartreuse jerk bait shows up yeah, well. Don't forget these are on sale. These old school tackle um, paddle tails are on sale until the end of August. So come in and get them now. Uh, they are 20% off. And uh, as far as jig kits go, I'm usually fishing anywhere from a quarter ounce to a three eighths ounce if I have to. Wanting to keep in mind is you always want to fish the lightest jig head you can get away with. It's going to provide the best action, looks more natural coming through the water column. Yep. So that's important there too. Quarter ounce, three eighths ounce jig head. Um, if you want to do something a little bit different, something that I really enjoy fishing and uh, is really popular is popping cork. Um, over the past you know three or four years, popping corks have really taken on popularity. I haven't been out there too much right now, but during this time last year, I was doing really well in the Severn fishing popping corks with three and four inch paddle tails underneath. Um, when I'm fishing a popping cork, I even go lighter on the jig head. And the reason for that is I can keep my popping cork in the same place for a long period of time. So I don't want necessarily a jig that's falling really quick. When I pop, I want to draw the fish's attention with the noise of this, but have a really nice slow fall. So I might even fish an eighth ounce or even a, a sixteenth if I can get a good hook in there. Um, so that's a really good option too. And that's going to transition into speckled trout fishing, which is still good this time of the year. Um, it becomes a little bit more tough with the, the high heat we have, but if you're pushing down to some of those islands, going Poplar Island and south, speckled trout are being caught. Um, but they're not going to be up against the tightest, tightest part of the shoreline like we have earlier in the summer months or in the spring months. They start to back off to those secondary ledges, anywhere from four to eight feet of water. And that's where I really love a popping cork because I can keep them in place. Um, if I'm casting a paddle tail and retrieving it or casting a shrimp bait, whatever it might be, a lot of times it's hard to keep that in that strike zone, that four to eight feet of water. But with a popping cork, I can really keep it stationary and stay in there. So, so that's a really good idea if you guys are headed out to some of those islands on the east side there. It's a really good option too. Um, yeah, definitely. Talking about some of those more popular saltwater fish, if you, you head even further down, we start to run into the cobia and the redfish. Um, it has, it's been pretty good lately. I know a lot of big bull reds caught in Maryland waters all the way down to the tunnel. Um, cobia is a little bit more finicky, but when you get on them, there's been some really big fish caught this year. As far as stuff you're going to fish for those, if you're sight casting to them, uh, heavier jig heads with eight and eight inch curly tails is probably the most common bait. And then you're, you're uh, representing an eel, which we also do have live eels, so you can toss those too. Yeah, and um, another good bet is you can troll for those bigger bomber spoons like we have from Hardhead that I forgot to grab here. They're a really good option for you. Yep. Um, those are a good one. Or the really big eels, uh, the tube eels, I should say. You control with those with size three uh, inline planters like we're going to talk about in a minute with mackerel. So why don't you touch a little bit on the white perch, Ryan? Yep. Uh, so we just finished up our white perch open on uh, last Sunday. Uh, so I believe two of the winners were caught on uh, the Captain Burt's Perch Hounder spinnerbait in the electric chicken color. Uh, these are really, really good lures for fishing in the river systems. I'm sure if you've watched any of these videos, you've seen a perch hounder. Um, they're really good baits. They cast really far for what they are, and they just work really well. Uh, that's really all there is to it. They're really simple to use. Um, if you're just starting or you've been fishing for 50 years, um, a perch, perch hounder is going to work for you. And then also touching um, on some bait, we have live soft crabs. So uh, you can quarter these things up into a million little perch baits. They work really well. 
Um, and I know some tournament winners were caught with soft crab also at the Bay Bridge. Uh, speaking of the Bay Bridge, these also work for rockfish at the Bay Bridge. Uh, you put them on a circle hook, maybe quarter them or cut them into a little bit smaller pieces and uh, you just toss them under a piling and rockfish should eat them up. And another thing you can do is put them right underneath of a popping mm -hmm. fork and fish that in the shallows too. That's another good yep. thing. We don't do them much up here in the bay, but if you push down in North Carolina, South Carolina, they fish all sorts of things underneath of the pot. Definitely. And then um, probably the most exciting thing going around right now is trolling for Spanish mackerel and bluefish. Um, all this stuff here is for Spanish mackerel and bluefish. So starting off, we'll talk about trolling. Um, we have made up some trolling combos here um, already rigged with a planer and a spoon on an Andy rod with a Kuma SLX lever drag trolling reel. We have 40 pound suffix monofilament on there. And then we have 40 pound leader um, leading to this spoon here. A uh, really good setup for you guys. Uh, works perfectly. Uh, the best you can get really uh really simple stuff and we already set it up for you so you could come in buy a setup three four of these and take them out trolling catch spanish mackerel and, fish. and then also we have these uh spreader bar rigs of with the spoons from captain john's baits they just have a bunch of teasers these create a lot of shine in the water it looks like a school of fish and then we have further back, you have these two hooks um, that the fish will most likely bite uh, the further back weaker baits. So those are a really good option also. You can run an inline sinker with these to get them down a little bit further because if you're trolling, these are probably gonna pop up on the surface with no weight because you are trolling a little bit faster, six, seven knots for Spanish mackerel. So you're gonna to wanna to use an inline sinker with these. Um, Those are also fabulous for bluefish and rockfish. Yeah, um, definitely. You do wanna be careful. Sometimes he's gonna talk about it a little bit more. When we're trolling for mackerel, we're going at a little bit higher rate of speed, anywhere from six all the way up to nine knots. You can't troll that at nine knots. It's gonna be one of the, a huge disaster. Everything's gonna get tangled for you. So if you are wanna target mackerel with that, you wanna stay on the slower speeds there for the mackerel. But if you slow down, I think in the summer months, there's not a better trolling day for the bluefish and rockfish. Yeah. Um, and then moving on, uh, like we have set up on this rod already for you, we have a number two Sea Striker planer. We have a tube eel slash spoon leader with a snap swivel and a ball bearing swivel. And then we have the spoon also. Um, so those are gonna be really good for trolling. And we have everything to set it up yourself. If you already have the rod and reel, then we have the leaders, the planers, and the spoons. Um, moving into casting for mackerel. A lot of times you will see them blowing up on the surface. So my favorite by far is these hoagie epoxy jigs. Uh, these two are my favorite colors. So they're gonna be eating bay anchovies, which are a greenish brown color. So we have the brown and then the green. They swim really well. You could burn them across the surface and that'll really get those fish fired up. But these are a little bit more on the pricey side. So we have these uh, Sting Silvers in the gold and pink. Pink is one of my favorite colors for mackerel, or mackerel. also. Bluefish, rockfish, they will all hit it. Um, again, burning them across the surface. And then a third option for you is this variety pack. We have different weights in here from Gotcha. It's gonna be the jig fish, three different colors, three different weights. So a good variety pack to just get you out there, get started. Um, One thing to keep in mind with these spoons, like you said earlier, uh, just wanna reinforce, these are casting spoons, not trolling spoons. We didn't grab any of the trolling spoons like we should have. Yep. Um, but on here, the, you're gonna see the trolling the spoon. spoon. It's gonna be on here, the Clark spoon. They are, are weightless spoons that do well at a high rate of speed. So the Clark spoon is the classic on the bay that has been out there forever. Mm -hmm. Um, another really, really popular option are from Bomber. The smallest sizes they make in their Bomber spoons. Yep, the number one. Um, have been probably the most popular over the past three or four years for mackerel yep. in the bay. Yep, uh, like you said, these are for casting. You're not gonna wanna troll these, um, but if you're trolling and you see a bunch of fish blowing up on the surface, um, maybe have one of these set up on a spinning rod so you can throw it out there and burn it across the surface, maybe get a couple of those fish off of that school.
you know, when he says burning it, he really means burning it. A lot of times yeah. you want that jig skipping on the surface. I know it seems fast, but mackerel are incredibly fast. I think I read somewhere once they can get up as fast as 27 miles an hour. So, yeah. so they can move. Yeah, that's why you're gonna to wanna to troll those higher speeds. Usually when we're trolling for rockfish, which is typically what we troll for in the bay, you're trolling two, three knots. Uh, now with mackerel, you're trolling six plus. Um, so it's more like trolling out in the ocean for like tuna or marlin or even um, wahoo sometimes. So yeah, you're gonna to wanna to troll those higher speeds and that's why we use these planers. Um, they're gonna hold up to the speeds just fine. The last thing, speaking of crabs, before I eat that soft crab, if you wanna go hard crabbing, uh, it's been pretty good in the Magathy and the Severn. Uh, I think I touched on it last week, but the most important thing is finding really clean water and being around grass. So if you wanna run your trout line, there's really good grass in the Magathy and the Severn. Um, look for that clean water though, because some of our tides lately have been pushing a lot of really dark, muddy water into the into our rivers and stuff but if you could find the cleaner side of the river yeah. and get around that grass it's been really good in the magazine and seven people limiting out on their bushels of crab so so that's definitely something you could get into as well um, and it's the time of the year for for crabbing yeah. you can catch a lot of that yep definitely thank you guys for watching have a good one